Hey, what's up guys? Stefan here. Today, we're going to be continuing on with our recording in Logic Pro X series, diving a little bit deeper into Logic Pro X vocal recording workflows. I'm going to show you a new workflow I have that takes us away from my old workflow of using a headphone splitter in order to listen in on the recording and allows us to, as engineers, have our own separate mix. Now when a singer wants a change to their headphone mix, we don't have to experience the same changes and vice versa. If the vocalist wants something turned up or turned down but we want it to remain the same in our ears, if the vocalist wants to click up but we want it totally off, we can do that. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step but I've also included a free download for Logic Pro 10 which is a template which implements exactly what we're going to be doing now. First, we need to head to Audio MIDI Setup. Click on the little plus icon in the bottom left corner. Then click on Create Aggregate Device. On the right, select your audio interface first, then select Built-in Output. At the top, we can see a legend that indicates that the built-in output is blue. And from that, we know that the built-in output is now on channels three and four. So as the engineer, you will be plugging your headphones straight into your computer or laptop. And in Logic, you'll be coming out of outputs three and four. The vocalist, as normal, will plug their headphones straight into your audio interface. If you have an audio interface with more outputs, then these channels will be different. So we've basically combined two audio devices together to create a new device, which we can name whatever we like. Now in Logic, we can select our new device as the input and output. It can just be the output if you'd like, it should still work just the same. And now we can see we have four channels to play with as opposed to two regarding our outputs. Before we go any further, let's make sure that software monitoring is on, otherwise this will not work. Either head to Logic Pro X, Preferences, Audio, general and toggle on software monitoring or right click on the control bar and display and make sure under modes and functions that software monitoring is ticked. Then in our control bar and display, we can turn it on. It's this green button right here. Next, we have to create a bus channel that we can send signal to. When creating a bus, you can use whatever bus you like. Then change the bus's output to channels three and four so whatever channels your built-in output is assigned to. Logic will then automatically create a new stereo output channel for those said channels. For us, it's channels three and four. For you, it may be something different. Now, all we have to do is add a send to each channel we would like to hear in our mix. We can also change the buses to pre-fader so that changes to the singer or rapper's mix doesn't affect our mix. Now on each channel, we can turn up the bus to increase the level going into our headphones. Notice how as I increase the level, the volume on the monitor bus and outputs three and four is increasing. Now watch how when I turn down the fader, the volume on the monitor bus and outputs three and four remains the same. That's because they are both now independent. This is how we create our own mixes. I then advise to creating sends for your effects like reverbs and routing out all of your audio channels to buses for things like compression. As you can see, like in part one, I'm using track stacks for my buses. So I have a group of verse channels, a group of chorus channels and so on. These are all going to buses where I can do global effects like adjust all the volume for all of my channels. Uh, things like mute all of the channels, add compression, so on and so forth. And these will affect all the channels in this uh, track stack. This is mainly for convenience. When I'm recording vocalists, I like to be quick. If I need to create a new channel, I just do uh, Command D, create a new channel in that track stack with all the same settings applied. Now, sometimes vocalists like to have a bit of reverb and compression on their voice. Why? Because it makes you sound better. Everyone sounds better in the shower. 
But sometimes as an engineer, you want to hear what's really going on. And it's also good to hear what's going on. So you're not fooled by compression and reverb and thinking that the vocal take was actually better than it really was. Now, to avoid these settings going into our mix channel for, for us as audio engineers, we can leave these channels out. As long as the buses are on the channels within the track stack, we will hear what we need to hear. Now you may be thinking that this is a pretty complex setup just for recording vocals, but it's great for two reasons. One, I always say you never know what the vocalist is gonna throw at you. You wanna be prepared, you want to be able to work quick, and you wanna keep the vocalist happy. A happy vocalist is a vocalist that's gonna perform better. But number two, and mainly, is for your own sake as the engineer. I've been in many sessions that have gone on for seven, eight hours in my home studio, in my bedroom studio, and and my ears have absolutely been destroyed, obliterated, because I've had the singer or rapper's mix in my ears. So this way you have a lot more control over what you hear and what you do not hear. Once you've set it up once, you don't have to set it up again. You just open up as a new template and you're good to go. With this setup, you no longer have to use a headphone splitter or buy a mixer. Lastly, if you do want to turn up the overall level of your headphones, just head to system preferences on your Mac and make sure that the built-in output is the output selected. This will enable the volume controls on your Mac. Like I said, I created a template implementing all of this for free download. All you have to do is head to the link in the description below or on screen and share the video via the social locker. So that's either a tweet, a Facebook post or a Google share. I will add that you may have to reassign the monitor bus channel outputs to outputs 3 and 4 or whatever channels you need them to be. Just check it before you get going to make sure it's all working fine. Also, the template does not set up the aggregate device for you. You have to do that yourself. There's no way for me to put that in a free download. So just refer back to this video if you do get stuck. Now that's all good, but sometimes, especially when we start adding effects, we can run into some issues like latency. When there is a delay from the time the vocalist sings and when they actually hear themselves back. This is a huge issue and we've all experienced it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of quick fixes. But before we move on, if you're a singer or rapper living in sunny England that's looking to record pro vocals, be sure to check out Squat Studios, a new platform that makes it easy to find studios near you and book sessions straight from their native iOS app. This is not in any way a sponsored video, but they're just about to launch their beta for their app or beta, beta, depending where you are in the world. The first 100 free signups will actually get onto this beta, so I'm bringing it to you guys first, giving you guys the inside scoop. And it's a great opportunity to test out the app and offer some suggestions to make it even better. I'll be signing up myself and if you run a studio in England, then this is a great opportunity for you to get in early, get in on the ground floor and open some doors up for some new business. You can sign up for free via the link in the description below. Okay, so back to the tutorial. The quickest fix is to head to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Audio and decrease the buffer size. Your computer will process things quicker, resulting in a shorter delay in hearing the audio back. Often, this will do the trick, but it means your computer will have to work harder. If your computer lacks the power, this could result in system overloads and possibly even little pops and clicks in your audio recording. So I say that to say this, don't go crazy. If you've got some latency issues, decrease the buffer size in stages each time going one level down and just testing it with your vocalist or yourself if you're recording yourself to make sure everything's running smoothly and your recording is also clean. There's no pops and clicks, so on and so forth. Now in all fairness and honesty, when recording vocals, you should only have one or two audio effects running in your session tops. There's no real need for any more. So you shouldn't really run into any system overload issues. Your instrumental should ideally be a stereo audio file to keep the session light. If you want more flexibility and have access to the music files, then just make sure 
you're working with bounce down track stems as opposed to the actual track session with all the MIDI files, etc. If you do that, you are asking for trouble. Another way which you can argue is the quickest way is to turn on low latency mode. If it's not already in your control bar and display, just right click and then here under modes and functions, select low latency mode. But the reason why I mentioned it last is because one, it doesn't always work, I found, and two, it will disable a load of things you may actually want. So I will try the first approach first, and then if push comes to shove, the second approach using low latency mode. Essentially what low latency mode is doing is just turning off different effects and so on and so forth to take the strain off the CPU on your computer. You can actually do this yourself by disabling plugins one by one and just seeing how the computer performs after you've disabled a few things. But that's it guys, if you learnt something new today, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more videos just like this. I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.